So these are uh, the objectives uh, that were given to us uh, to address. Uh, we need to understand the dynamics of, uh, uh, of the major mega trends uh, in Africa. Uh, we need to understand that. Uh, we need to understand how these mega trends affect uh, security uh, in Africa. Uh, and then we need to understand uh, as African security sector leaders, you know, uh, we need to understand uh, the, the implications. Next slide. You know, we should always start uh, at the beginning. Uh, first things, uh, first things first. Uh, bottom line, we need to understand our strategic environment. Uh, we need to understand our strategic environment. And the strategic environment in Africa is incredibly complex, very complex. And the reason why you are sitting here is because there's an expectation that you'll be able to shape that environment favorably. Certainly, this is our expectation. Uh, you are security sector leaders, emerging security sector leaders in Africa. It's your responsibility to shape that strategic environment. And for you to shape it, you need to understand it first. You need to understand it first. Is it easy? Absolutely not. It's an incredibly, incredibly difficult task. Uh, it's incredibly difficult because for you to fully understand it, you basically have to keep an eye on each and every one uh, of these parts. They're entangled, they're intertwined. It's hard, it's hard. You know, uh, look at the strategic environment, kind of like uh, a diamond. You know, a diamond with many, many faces. You know, uh, diamonds don't usually come in just two faces, right? That diamond would basically be worthless. Uh, the worth of a diamond is really a couple of, I'm not a diamond expert, but you know, it's really on the number of faces it has, right? And on the clarity and so on and so forth. So you as a strategist have to understand each one of the faces of the diamond. That's, that's, that's difficult. Uh, so as we go through this uh, conversation, as we go through this presentation, I want you to keep uh, asking a couple of questions. What are the impacts? What are the impacts of these mega trends? And what are the implications? What are the strategic implications? What are the security implications? That's what I'd like you uh, to, to, uh, to, to think about. And maybe in the Q&A, uh, we can engage uh, uh, in conversations. At the strategic level, uh, the question that you need to ask is, you know, what is it, the end state that we desire? What, what do we want as an end state? Right? How do we shape the strategic environment so that that desirable end state is actually achieved? Because, by the way, my friends, we have no choice. We have to shape the strategic environment. The other thing that I want you to ask yourselves is, how do we get there? How do we get to this desired end state? How do we get there? How do we mobilize the resources to get us there? How do we employ those resources? How do we manage those resources? to get us there. That's what I want you to, uh, to reflect on. There's also important implications for security. As security sector officials, 
we are entrusted with the business of producing security. You know, sometimes, you know, I used to, uh, when I was uh, here at the Africa Center before, uh, my portfolio was the portfolio that my, my dear colleague now has managing security sector uh, resources in Africa. And um, one of the questions that I was asked a lot was, well, you know, we go back to home, uh, we always have a problem kind of explaining why is it that we get so much of the scarce resources of the state and then, you know, we don't produce anything. You know, the the, agri the agricultural minister says, oh, well, I'll, we'll produce food. Uh, and, you know, the uh, health minister says, well, we'll deliver health and so on and so forth. And the security sector, will look at, they, they look at that as just wasteful. You know, the scarce resources are just being wasted. And I said, well, that's, that's the, uh, that's, not the most accurate way of looking at the security sector because you also produce. You produce a very important good. Let me ask you, what, 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 is, the, what is the good that you produce, the public good that you produce? What is it? Now, silence should not be an option in a room full of security sector officials. Even you yourselves don't know what you're producing. What are you producing? Almost. Hey, security. You must be afraid. <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it's, you produce security. You produce security. Without security, nothing really works. Nothing works. You know, security is to is to the the nation what oxygen is to the body. Right? Without it, it just the nation cannot function. The nation collapses. So we need to think about the security implications of some of these mega trends that we are uh, talking about. Next slide. So uh, Dr. Resnick already covered this. Uh, demographic change, you know, Africa population, let's just put it this way, it's increasing very, very rapidly. Very, very, very rapidly. You know, uh, over the last century, African population has increased tenfold. This is, this is incredible. It just keeps growing, keeps growing. By 2050, Mm, uh, uh, conservative figures, 2.5 billion, right? It could be more. It could be more. Uh, and get this, by mid-century, 25% of the global population, African. 25% of the African population, African. Next slide. And what's more interesting is the median age. You know, look at Japan, 48. China, 38. India, you know, you get to Nigeria, the median age is 18. 18. This is incredible. And the fertility uh, rates are also very, very high. Next slide. What are some of the security implications? What are some of the security implications? Well, high birth rates will add pressure uh, on scarce resources. Uh, the resources are already scarce. You know, now you have more mouths to feed. Now you have more citizens to educate, you have to provide uh, health care. You have to provide. You have to provide everything because the citizens. The expectation is that they are coming into this world to have a good life. To have a good life, 
you know, we don't bring we don't bring human beings into this world to suffer, right? Now, so this is important implications. How are you going to distribute the resources? Your inability to do so may have consequences. The consequences could be violence. The consequences could be uh, conflict. The consequences could be just a vast recruitment pool for uh, extremist groups. Because the extremist groups are, are, are providing an alternative way of looking at things in Africa. Politics, society, et cetera, et cetera. Because the African state in Africa is not delivering the goods, the African state, let's be honest, is not delivering the goods. So the citizen is basically looking around and saying, who can deliver the goods? And if somebody comes with a convincing discourse that I can deliver the goods, well, guess what? If the recruitment pool is available and somebody says, look, come to me, some will follow. So there are important security implications to that. Next slide. Urbanization, Dr. Resnick already said it all. The only thing that uh, I would say without repeating what she said, next slide, is that you know, there are strategic implications to urbanization. You know, as somebody who was born and raised in Africa, I, I have a pretty good sense of the urban setting in Africa. And, you know, if we're going to be honest, some of the urban settings in Africa, they don't look very pretty. They don't look very pretty. You know, uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna mention any cities. I'm not gonna mention any cities. But there are some cities in Africa. They're very close to being ungovernable. Very very close. There are certain parts of our African cities where you cannot go unless you just don't go, you know, because it's not safe. It's not safe. Sometimes even the police cannot go in there, right? So uh, how do we ensure that all urban areas are well governed? That's the strategic implication. How all these cities are growing and growing and growing. 75, well, a good percentage of them are slums. A good percentage of them are slums. Slums, by definition, mean that probably goods are not being delivered. You go to big cities where just basic running water, basic sewage, all sorts of infrastructure. So the strategic implication of this growing cities, huge urbanization, how do we govern them well? How do we turn them all into safe cities? Right, so that is the key uh, strategic uh, implication. I don't believe I already, <laughs> went through my all oh my time. I only have five minutes. Okay, let me let me run a bit more. What kinds of cities do we want? What kind of cities do we need? These are the strategic uh, implications. The security implications is how do we ensure that all cities are go areas? You know, there's no go places uh, in 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 cities uh, that is something that uh, affects us all 
uh, citizens. Next slide. The rising middle class, again, this was discussed. Next slide. Suffice it to say that the, the middle class in Africa is rising very, very quickly. Uh, I was able to find figures for 1980, 90, 2000, 2010. My colleagues and I spent a whole day trying to find data for 2020. We couldn't find data for 2020. Uh, it's just uh, again one of one of the uh, one of the things about doing um, working on Africa. Sometimes uh, data is hard to find. What you get the point. Uh, the middle class uh, is growing very quickly. Next slide. Next slide. The characteristics of uh, the African middle class uh, are there. Also, uh, next slide. Uh, the strategic implications of a growing middle class. You know, we know intuitively that the middle class is key to development. The middle class is key to development. You know, that's why, and, and development, it's key to many things. Stability, prosperity, peace, and so on and so forth. None of that. There's no way you can get to peace without development. No way. Right? There's no way you can get to security without development. So the middle class is the basically, let's call the middle class the development champion. The middle class is focused on development for reasons that uh, you know uh, well. Uh, so development uh, and, and, and good governance also. Let's not forget good governance. Uh, the middle class, they champion good governance uh, better than anybody. So uh, these are a couple of the strategic implications uh, of a growing middle class. They will be making demands. They will be making demands. Give me more security. Give me more development. Give me more public goods. So you need to listen to the middle class. You need to listen to the middle class. You know, there are also security implications of a growing middle class. You know, the middle class is incredibly sensitive to turmoil. You know, there's nothing that the middle class abhors more than turmoil, violence, insecurity, and all of that, the whole category, the whole family, the middle class, of, the, the middle class will run the other way. So if on the one hand, the middle class is absolutely critical to development and then security and peace and so on, the middle class will run away from insecurities. So your main role as a security sector official is to make sure that you have the conditions for the middle class to feel secure, to feel happy, so that the middle class can do what it does best. They'll promote prosperity, development, good governance, and so on and so forth. So take care of your middle class. Climate change, next slide. Uh, this was already covered. Uh, suffice it to say that, next slide, uh, climate change can halt or reverse development. Uh, next slide. Uh, you know, these are some of the uh, pressing uh, challenges uh, in Africa. Next slide. You know, uh, there are already conflicts, as Dr. Resnick was talking about. Uh, they are connected uh, to uh, to climate change. Uh, we've seen communities that used to get along. All of a sudden, now they're fighting. Uh, communities that would um, live side by side, capturing synergies. All of a sudden, uh, they are turning uh, guns 
uh, to each other. So th there are strategic implications of that. Uh, there are security uh, implications uh, of that. Uh, increased scarcity of food and water, um, it was already uh, mentioned. Uh, when uh, on top of that, uh, you have unemployed youth, uh, you really have uh, a really terrible combustible uh, mix. Next slide to just conclude, because I only have a couple of minutes. You know, emerging technologies uh, were already uh, mentioned. But I'm, I'm very, very concerned uh, by the second bullet, uh, disinformation and misinformation uh, in Africa. You know, we all know that uh, just about, when we go to Africa, just about everybody carry, carries a cell phone. Um, and, and, and Africans, uh, people elsewhere have, have embraced technologies to, uh, to advance their condition, to improve their condition. But the, that phone they carry, uh, it, it's also, can be also be used as a weapon by countries, governments, institutions, who have an interest, who have a strategic interest in uh, completely misinforming, disinforming, malinforming Africans. So that what we s believe to be real, it actually is not. What we believe to be the truth is actually not. So, and this can have very important strategic implications uh, in Africa. Already has, already has. You know, you know, as some of our allies uh, who have had for a very long time a solid presence in Africa. All of a sudden, their presence is not very understood anymore. Their presence is not very welcome anymore. And they're looking around and say, well, what happened? What happened? What happened was that uh, a, a certain weapon that was almost invisible was used very effectively. And the use of that weapon has changed, has altered the strategic environment. So we need to pay attention, especially uh, to this connection with social media, information, disinformation. Because we are we're in a bit of a conundrum. On one hand, we want an open society. Yet, on the other hand, the openness of the society can be used to destabilize the society. How do we, as security sector officials, handle that? How do we do that? I don't have the answers. But uh, at least we'll be uh, together for three weeks so that together uh, we can find uh, some of the answers uh, to these uh, very, very pressing uh, strategic and security uh, issues. Uh, Dr. Mewa, that's it for me. Thank you all.